I remember saying last episode that I was spending too much time on the motor. Not that it isn't necessary, but I was traveling the same path more than once and never reaching my destination. Now it is time for the motor to take a trip itself. Over to Briggs Auto and Marine. He'll sort the issues out in no time. I bought a new coil, spark plugs, plug wires, cap, rotor, anything that I thought it might need. Sometimes you have to admit defeat, call in the experts, and go on to something you're good at. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The wooden boat experience. Look what I got in the mail. Perry from TRFMB on Etsy. Now Perry, I met last year. He was here in Clayton. He lives out in Utah, but he's got a, comes here to Clayton and ha, now this year we'll have a Chris Craft in Clayton. And he sent me these really cool glasses. It says, the river floats my boat, and we got two of them, and they are going to be awesome in the Chris Craft. Thank you, Perry. Welcome, everybody, to episode 37. A uh, couple things before we get started. I just wanted to remind you guys about the 15% discount for Total Boat. And that's a one-time discount, and you can find the code for that down below in the description on the replay. And it's in there right now as well. Um, and thanks to everybody on Patreon. Um, Patreon is a big help to me, and I'm glad everybody's on there. And I welcome everybody from Patreon. Hey, look at Nina's here, and David, are here. David is here. Uh, didn't know I was going to do this uh, tonight. And sorry, I didn't give you guys a lot of notice, but um, trying to figure everything out with this software and how it works with YouTube. And so I don't know if I want too many people watching when I'm doing it live till I get it figured out, but I'm glad you guys are here. So uh, let's go right to the next one, next video here, and take a look at that. See what we, uh, some of the stuff we did this week. I forgot I needed to put these bungs in here. So just now when I was getting ready to varnish again, I said I can't keep waiting. So I put the bungs in. Now I'm gonna put some stain on them. And we'll wipe that against the grain, of course. Making sure we get it all off of the varnish that's already there and you can see it pretty well if you're sitting here probably not from your angle and we'll count on the varnish to hold those bungs in place I'm using Thixaflex to fill in some nail head holes as well as a small section of mahogany near the lifting eye that was chipped out at some point I'm scraping off the excess and also wiping it off the varnish. This king plank varnish is ready for its first sanding. When I do that sanding, the epoxy will get sanded at the same time. I did this before on my St. Lawrence skiff and it looked and worked well. I'll add more coats of varnish to this later on. Wow, David, thanks so much for that uh, super chat. That's awesome. Um, before I saw that and it kind of threw me off. I'm like, wow, what's that big pink thing on there on the chat? Um, so that was called odds and ends. And there was two things in there that I wanted to mention. That stain that I'm using, that um, Interlux, it's Chris Crab Mahogany stain and it's a filler stain. I was dreading staining this boat because when you, when you stain, anybody that's stained before knows that if you start to overlap stain, and it doesn't stay totally wet, you get this darker area in the middle and then you have to restain and get rid of it. That does not happen with this stuff. It's just amazing how well it works and how forgiving it is. It, it, there's just no problems. There's no streaking or anything. It is very important that you wipe against the grain to fill in that mahogany, but I used it on, um, on the white oak as well for the spray rails. And wait till you see those. They don't look like white oak at all. It, it's really amazing. And also, some people might think that, that using that epoxy the way I did it might be a bad idea, but I did that on my St. Lawrence skiff, and it, it worked really well. I did uh, sand down in a little bit on top of that varnish before I put it in, but 
I think that's going to be a good way because the epoxy is so clear. I don't think you're going to notice it once I put, I still got to put like five, six coats of varnish on that king plank. So uh, the next thing is something that I know Nina is going to like because she likes seeing those, uh, the throttle or the ceiling pieces. What I really love about doing restoration work the way that I do is you can take what's left of a boat, which is sitting by that door, that old mahogany, that piece of a hull from a lures from 1964, and you can reuse that wood to do something like this. You can see the ceilings I'm working on today. And then it becomes something like that. And that is where all that wood came from for those ceilings right there is all from that hull over there. Cut up, reused, and man, it's just starting to look fantastic. The helm is gonna look great too. I mean, this, this whole front is gonna be this color of wood except for the seat fabric and then the floor, which will be that light gray. It'll be very similar to the gray that's up under the bow. And that'll, but that'll be the non-skid. The helm starting to come together. The box that holds the throttle is over there. These ceilings are going in. Unfortunately, it's Thursday, and I probably should stop pretty soon. But I just had to get those those ceilings in there. Now they've only got, I think, five coats of varnish. But I'll probably finish putting coats on as I do the dash, and the deck up on top of the dash, and the windshield. It's just another thing to put the varnish on at the same time. And man, wait till that door gets back in there too. I mean, this cockpit is really gonna look good. Okay, so I just did that today, this morning. So it's kind of weird to watch what you did this morning here on the video. A couple things I'm looking at in the chat. Uh, Dad Gamut, by the way, Dad Gamma, I need your address so I can, um, if you could email it to me so I can send you that sticker. And is is ceiling supposed to be spelled like that? I don't know. I don't often see that written in a book in boating or anything. Um, I'd like to, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to check on that. It is spelled ceiling. That's what Ian says. Okay. I wasn't too sure about that after when somebody asked me, I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Um, so uh, well, there was one thing I wanted to mention in there. Let's see this. Oh, it's throttles. Oh, I'm going to think about it in a minute. I don't remember what it was. But let's go. We'll go on to the next one, and I'll make sure that I, I do mention it afterwards. Don't remember what that was. Here is about the varnishing this week. I can't remember how many coats are on here. I'd have to go into the studio. There's something like 10. And I just did a pretty good sand. And you can see it's not perfect. The parts that are really white are perfectly smooth. Now, if I did five, six more coats, I could get that and then sand it. I could get rid of that right there. But honestly, this is going to be the level that I'm going to be happy with. And I'm going to put another coat of epiphanes this will be the last epiphanes coat you can see up here as well and give it one more uh quick scotch bright and then i will put on two coats of total boat i believe i'm going to use the gleam so uh we'll know i'll know that better i gotta grab those cans out of the studio but it's looking fairly smooth it's not perfect there are some ridges in here 
but you know what kind of boat we're making here. This thing isn't going on a trailer and I'm not putting a crown on it because it's not a queen. This boat is gonna get used. Here's a spot to be very careful of when you're varnishing a boat, you know, a boat like in this case, this piece is already put on and it has screws. I almost left a couple of drips on these two screws here. I happened to look back at an angle, which always helps. And I was like, oh, there's a drip there. And that's because when you run the brush by here, and even though, you know, with these oval hats, they stick up a little bit, they scrape a little bit of paint out of the brush. Next thing you know, you've got a drip there. That's why I always go back and I turn, I look sideways and then I come and then I look this way and I try to look for any drips or if you've got a whole bunch of them in a row, those are called curtains and they are a real nightmare to get rid of. So watch out for that. There is some pretty good gloss um, shininess on this piece. I'm really gonna like it once we get the mat on there. As usual it is night varnishing time it's Saturday night and I don't know it's 11 o'clock or so maybe 11 30 I've got Jordy on listening to Peter talk about what he's doing thinking about how nice it is where he lives in Victoria and getting my varnishing done so I just uh, sanded and scuffed everything down. And now I'm going to put some more of the epiphanes on the ceilings on this middle flagpole because that only has several coats on it. But on the gas to tank door, the throttle, uh, whatever we call that thing box, we're going to put the first Total Boat Gleam satin on. So I got to hit this all with a tack rag, wipe it down, and then I'll be doing some varnishing. Now it is time for the first coat of Gleam 2.0 satin. Now you'll see that I've got it in a smaller quart um, unmarked can. There's the gallon that I got originally. But what I usually do if I get a gallon of something like varnish is immediately put it into the smaller cans um, that I buy at the hardware. They just sell blank cans there. And I end up with stuff that doesn't get opened until it's going to get used, rather than constantly opening this large one. Okay, so that was a little bit longer one. Um, and I do remember what I wanted to say when we were looking at the video for the ceilings. So on the sides of the seats, you guys may have noticed that there's two, on each side there's a little piece of plywood on the bottom. And then up on the um, back, there's a little piece of plywood on each side. There's four of them. And they look a little bit out of place right now because they're regular plywood. And I was going to paint those and then the rest of the seat will be covered with vinyl. But I think I'm going to remake those. I have the engine cover, which is made out of really nice um, mahogany plywood, and I'm gonna recut those, remake them in there so they are finished bright as well. I don't wanna have that whole cockpit that way and then suddenly, you know, you got one area that's not, it's not finished bright, it's just painted. Um, I just, I wanted to ask too, um, before I forget, do you guys, put it in the chat, do you guys like this format? Do you like the way that this works, that you have the opportunity to come and see it live? I know that uh, that the recording is a little weird when it's a live recording, but I'm going to do it different this week. That's why I'm doing it tonight. So I'm recording this as we're doing it on my software. And then I'm going to upload it as a regular video because YouTube doesn't like the um, the live streams afterwards. They don't treat them like regular videos and they don't, 
they don't put them up on the page to get as many views. It cuts my views about in half. So um, I'm trying to figure out a way around that. So let me know if you like this format. And uh, Nina says it is a queen, but do you like the little crown I put on there, Nina? I, I had to draw that in in um, the software I have on the on the um, iPad. Okay, so the the last video is the longest one, and this is kind of off the boating track a little bit, but not sort of not off the boating track. So you're going to see some things that I made this week, and it's something that I do in the studio, and this is for unbeknownst. And there is one of them left. So the Patreon members got to see these first, and they purchased two of them. And um, you're going to see what they are, but you'll see at the end that there is one of them left. And that one, if you want a piece of this thing, and you'll see what it is, um, it is $75. And all you have to do is send me an email, and we'll figure out how to do that. So take a look at this, and then we'll talk at the end. Leather's wet. This is made, it's made on a CNC machine out of brass. And you just center it on here. And then bring it over to the arbor press. If the leather wasn't wet, sometimes it'll work, but not with something that has this much big flat area like this. Um, if it was something more like, had one in my pocket. What I do with it? There it is. If it was more like this B, if I can focus on it, the B has a lot of open area, so you can get away with not doing. Actually, we'll do one quick. Hold on a second. Dry leather right here, and the B. Take you guys over here. We'll just put this B in the center here. Press down, bring it over here, and that one's really in there. It's upside down, but that's what the bee looks like. Uh, it actually, because with this one being wet, it stays the same color. With this one, because it's dry and the lines are so fine, it actually discolors the leather a little bit when you press this in that hard. But um, when you stain the leather, because we won't leave it this color, uh, that tends to go away a little bit. But it also adds a little definition. Yeah, I'm going to hold the camera with one hand, not hold this. Yeah, that's not working very well. Let me prop it up here and see what happens. That's better. Just dye in the leather here. Coincidentally, this dye is called mahogany. And afterwards, you have to wax it as well after this dries. The last thing that you have to do with the leather is put wax on it. So I'm putting a coating on here. I'll let it dry a little while, and then I buff it with a real soft cloth. Looks terrible when you first put it on, but it makes it look really nice when it's done. This is a wool dauber, it's called. use these and the leather doesn't get scratched and the last thing on these these are coasters here not the other pieces but same leather this just a little thicker a little buffing buff that wax off gives it a really really nice look
Got a package here from Total Boat. Roller covers. Stir sticks. Epoxy bilge paint. We've got a second coat to put on some of the bilge before that motor gets dropped in very soon. So that'll be useful because we're almost out. This blue is what we're using for the highlight, um, the boot stripe and some highlights inside the interior. So Largo blue on the wet edge and some non-skid deck paint and light gray. Some topside primer because we're almost out of that. And I know I'm not gonna have enough to finish what I have to do. Lots of these cups, which are always so awesome. Some more roller covers and one of our favorite Total Boat projects, Thixo Flex. Thank you, Total Boat, for getting me this package. And you can see here these three pieces that I made out of leather and leftover ceilings. When I was making the port ceilings, I had these three reasonable sized pieces left over. And I just got this brass stamp for making uh, these, they're for making something else on leather. And I said, oh, these would be really cool to make. So I made these three. Maybe one of them can be yours. Thanks again, Total Boat. So you can see the, the, those pieces are left over from the ceilings. And um, I may make more of them. Um, it's, it's not that hard to make them. And if I can, I'll make more. It just depends on if there's pieces left over. Um, when I was doing those ceilings today on the starboard side, I literally only had little pieces left. But um, when I get towards the bottom, there's going to be some chunks left, I think. So we'll see about that. Um, and like I said, the last one that's left was the one that's, uh, I think it was number one. And it's... $75 and all the money just goes right back into the boat. I mean, that's that's all I do with the money that comes in from Patreon and everything. It, it just goes into the project. And uh, Kevin says he's all for this, this format if it gets the boat on the river. Yeah, that's the way I feel too because this really did. So normally it's, what, 8.38 right now, um, my time. So normally I would be somewhere between four and five hours from being finished with editing. And I would have started around lunchtime or so usually. So, um, and I, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed lately because it's not just because of the boat project. I've got too many things going on. And this is helping me a lot because now I just have to take a little while. Hopefully this recording will be good. And I've never recorded through the software before. So if the recording's good, I only have to upload it, put it up tomorrow morning, and we'll have a regular video. YouTube will treat it like a regular video and not, you know, not penalize me for that. And I do like a lot um, getting to talk to you guys. And if anybody has any questions right now, I'm not in a rush to get off of here. So um, I'm just looking at the chat. Uh, Dad Gamut says, how was the bilge paint to work with? Um, no, I, no, I don't mind. You guys can go off any subject to do with the boat. Um, I love that bilge paint. Uh, it's it's super, super easy to put on. Um, it's It's really seems to be really hard. And... I can't say anything bad about it. The only thing I found that it did one time that was weird, and I think it's because I painted it a couple old pieces of mahogany. If you know behind the back of the seat, there's these two pieces that come up and they have a little bit of an angle to them. I think they might have had some oil in them or something because after about a week, I got these little air bubbles that popped out and I just kind of wiped them off and they're gone. And I, I've got to put a second coat on there anyway. So it doesn't seem to have affected it any other way. It just looked weird. And that's the only place it happened. And it's right near where the engine was, which makes me think possibly there was some oil in the wood. Because I sanded those, but I didn't. I never cleaned them with anything like alcohol or anything. Uh, Stephen was saying the leather press is pretty cool. Uh, that leather press is actually an Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. It's really cheap. I would like to get a bigger one. And there's another thing called a click press that you actually put it in and you pull the handle down and it kind of, I don't know if there's a spring in there or something, but it clicks and makes it a lot easier so you don't have to pull so hard, but they're crazy money for one of those. And we don't do that much leather work that it's worth uh, the time. And plus you have to buy a die to cut with it every time rather than scissors or a knife or whatever. I'm looking to see if there's any 
Um, Tom's asking about clench the nails over. Oh, yeah, I know I should have. Actually, those escutcheon pins are a little bit too hard to do that. I think I would have damaged the mahogany if I had. They're not like copper clench nails that pop right over. I don't think it would have worked. I don't know why they're called escutcheon pins. I don't know what those are for. But the body of them, the shaft, is much heavier than a regular nail. And they're just a box that I've had for probably 20 years. I don't even know where it came from. That's a very old box. So um, I don't even know if you can find the same thing anymore. Certainly not with that, um, that look to them. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions that I missed in here. Ted says he received a sticker. Um, how about you, Zach? Are you still there, Zach? Did you receive your sticker? Because I, I thought I pulled your um, address off of something on Patreon or something, but did I do that wrong? Seems like the Patreon spelling was with an H now that I see your name, because I think you won from that week. Let me know if if I'm right about that. Um, Stephen Shea that's on the chat at the bottom, he made a really cool model of um, a boat that sits down in Cape Vincent. I saw it today on Facebook, which is really neat. I like that, Stephen. So can't wait till the border opens up and go over and see you. So that's all of the uh, videos that I have today. And um, it actually was about the same amount of video time as a normal video. What makes it easier is not having to line up the videos together and I can treat each one as a separate thing. So I can like on Monday, if I get done with my stuff on Monday and I have an hour, I can make that video from Monday instead of trying to do the whole thing at once. So that, that helps. Um, James is asking, maybe I missed it, but is there an anchor in the boat's future? Yes, I have a couple of anchors that I will put in there. I got to decide which one. I have a really cool old, really old antique folding anchor, but I think it's too big for that boat. So I may not be able to use that. Um, I do need an anchor because I'll be swimming off of that a lot. And, you know, with our wind, you can't just drift here. You'll end up in the rocks quick. Um, Steven's saying those pins are for the antique brass covers for keyholes on desk drawers. Oh, interesting. Well, that's cool. So if that's, uh, if anybody's got any more questions, thanks again, David, for that, um, that super chat. I think that's what that's called. That's really awesome. That, that will be a big help. Um, it's, you know, it's like you get into this part of the project and it seems like every time you turn around something else that you need, although total boat's been a big help. Um, Schaefer oil was a help, you know, giving me the stuff for that gave me enough for a whole second oil change as well. And, you know, their degreaser has been great. But Total Boat's just, they've been fantastic, you know. I love those guys. They're so easy to work with. So don't forget that I've got that that Total Boat um, discount for you guys at 15%. So don't, you know, use that. It's down below. They don't like it put up on the screen um, because it's, uh, in case it changes or something. Because these videos, you know, they sit up there forever and then people try to use them later on. And messes up the system. But if you go down in the in the description, you'll find it there. And um, see, oh, Dave's here. Hey, Dave, did you see my Facebook message where I said, uh, did you walk over to your island or did you use the boat? But the the water was up today. I, I saw, I went by today by Duck Cove and way in by the bridge is not all swampy. There's water in there now, so that's good. So I appreciate everybody showing up. I know it was like short notice, but I don't know if next week I'm going to do this same thing or a regular video. But I'll let you know a little bit more ahead of time next week. So if if that's it, I'm going to let you guys go. And uh, I appreciate everybody. And thanks for all the Patreon members. And there's a list right there. You don't need to see me. You can see them. And uh, Joe Field says he's got here late too. Nice to, nice to see you here, Joe. And um, I will talk to all you guys later. I really appreciate you guys being here.